You've just been exposed to nuclear radiation. Jeepers, mister, what's that? Radiation was first discovered in 1896 by French scientist Henri Becquerel. Sacré bleu! Oh! Don't be alarmed, Billy. Radiation is all around us. Really? Yes, Billy. You're exposed to it every day. Every time you go outside, you're exposed to radiation from the sun. Every time you turn on your TV or radio, you're exposed to radiation. Sometimes, even when you visit your doctor or your dentist, you're exposed to radiation. Some radiation is essential to life. Others, deadly. Well, gee, mister, how do I protect myself? You gotta learn about radiation, Billy. Can you teach me? I'd be glad to, Billy. There are two major types of radiation. Ionizing and non-ionizing. Ionizing radiation has higher energy levels, and non-ionizing has lower. There are two types of ionizing radiation, natural and man-made. Most of the radiation you're exposed to is natural, but there's an increasing amount of man-made radiation. Gosh, mister, I want to learn more! Alright, Billy, let's learn. We'll start with ionizing radiation. This occurs when energy particles and rays are expelled from the forces that bind them together. But with great power comes great responsibility. Man-made ionizing radiation is used to generate electricity, diagnose medical problems, breed crops, and conduct scientific research. Natural ionizing radiation comes from sources such as radon gas, cosmic radiation, internal radiation from potassium, radioactive elements in foods, and radioactive elements in terrestrial sources. Let's get more in depth, Billy. Are you sure, mister? Never give up, Billy. Trust your instincts. Okay! The primary natural radioactive elements in the Earth's crust that we are exposed to every day are uranium, thorium, potassium, radium, and their decay products. 55% of radiation exposure comes from radon, a gas formed by the decay of uranium-238 in the soil. Radon can in turn decay and emit more radiation until a stable non-radioactive substance is formed. Thorium, potassium, and radium also contribute to 8% of our exposure. And as if worrying about radiation from the Earth wasn't enough, we also have to worry about cosmic radiation from outside the atmosphere. Like aliens? <laughs> Don't worry about those aliens, Billy. Just watch out for those damn cummy bastards. Cosmic radiation contributes another 8% of annual radiation, and another 11% comes from within our own bodies. Jeez, mister, that sure is a lot of radiation! That isn't even the half of it, Billy. We haven't even gotten to man-made radiation. X-rays, like the kind you get when you go to the doctor or dentist, account for 11% of our radiation exposure. Simple household items such as colored TV sets, video displays, and smoke detectors contribute to 3%. Smokers get exposed to a significantly higher amount of radiation. So remember, Billy, don't smoke! What about nuclear radiation, mister? Whoa there, sport. That's what we're going to talk about next, Billy. 20% of the energy used in the United States comes from nuclear power reactors. Less than one one hundredth of a percent of exposure comes from nuclear power plant operations. Workers at these plants, however, are at a risk to receive a significantly higher dose of radiation exposure. Nuclear weapons testing contributes to only a very, very small amount of our exposure. Gee, mister, that's awful scary stuff! Yes, Billy, which is why you should report any commies in your neighborhood to the police so they can taste democratic justice. By golly, you can count on me! I knew I could, Billy. Now let's talk about non-ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation is electromagnetic radiation such as radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, and visible light. Non-ionizing radiation cannot remove electrons, but it can still be hazardous. It can interfere with heart pacemakers or aircraft equipment. Many home appliances, electrical wires, and transformers give off extremely low frequency electric and magnetic fields, or EMFs. Although inconclusive, some studies suggest a link between EMFs and leukemia and various cancers. Get off that cell phone, Billy. Don't you know cell phones can emit radiation, too? Goodness gracious, great balls of fire! 
It's just another one of those dirty communist tricks. Gee, mister, there are so many sources of radiation, but how do I protect myself? Well, I'll tell you, Billy. First, you have to know how much radiation you've received. The amount of exposure depends on the number and energy levels of the radiation particles, the distance from the source, the penetration power of the radiation, and the amount of exposure time. Amount of damage done by exposure is measured in REM, which stands for Radiation Equivalent Man. Doses of over 5 REM of ionizing radiation are known to increase risk of infection, cancer, and genetic defects. Doses of over 100 REM may cause the victim to develop radiation sickness and increase the risk of leukemia and lymphoma. Doses of over 200 REM are known to cause hair loss, bloody vomiting, <laughs> diarrhea, and can eventually cause sterility. Doses of 1,000 to 5,000 REM would cause heart failure and immediate death. Doses of over 5,000 REM can affect the brain and cause seizures and immediate death. Most levels of exposure can cause genetic defects or mental retardation in the offspring of the exposed. Radiation damages DNA by removing electrons or by changing the structure of other cells that interact with the DNA. After accidents such as Three Mile Island and Chernobyl, many Americans are afraid to live near nuclear power plants. Hey, Jimmy! Play fast! It's been the radiation leak. You have to get out of here. Oh, yeah. Wow, mister, you taught me so much. It was my pleasure, Billy. Now watch out for those damn commies. Okay, I better go now. Come on, come on. Oh, go. Why? Why? Where are you, Oscar? Why?